it took so long from, from, from when? When it started, what I think we are going to do with CO3 was <laughs> maybe uh, enormous, but uh, from this engraved shell from Java, which is uh, uh, half million years old, and it is uh, deemed to be the most ancient abstract, uh, most ancient writing, if you, if you know, if you can, you can say it, most ancient abstract uh, uh, signature, uh, which is made over a shell. In fact, a shell, uh, uh, we know that uh, cover shells have been the principal form of primitive money for thousands and thousands of years. I mean, it, it, it was an homo erectus, it, was, uh, it wasn't uh, an homo sapiens. Uh, so it's uh, very strange because uh, this uh, quite a new discovery it is two years ago, more or less. It is um, hundreds and thousands of thousands of years before what we thought uh, was possible. Um, I think this homo erectus, uh, by creating something abstract, wanted to realize it. That's my idea. You can think about one thing, but when you write a thing, it's because you are going, you are going to realize it, okay? Make it real, tangible. Um, the second quote is, about, is from uh, Nick Zabo, who is uh, the theorician behind Bitgold, a precursor to the Bitcoin. Uh, many people think that he is, in fact, Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, for sure is a very interesting thinker and uh, yeah he says hardly anybody actually understands money that, that was his idea and the first quote is by Jacques Derrida and uh, he says that uh, in two uh, thousand years uh, the problem of language uh, has been recognized as being uh, the problem of writing this is from 1967 de la grammatologie so, um, we can think about uh, techniques and uh, writing in particular as a uh, pharmaca, uh, from pharmacon in the neutral form, and uh, think that uh, in fact uh, they constitute uh, the subjectivity, they are inside our minds, they contaminate our organs and become part of our subjectivity. And um, for example, I, I don't want to mention uh, a long, uh, I don't want to say by Derrida, but uh, the idea is writing is a pharmacon for memory, and uh, it, that means that at the same time it's poison, uh, it kills memory, writing. That's, that's true, of course. Of course, uh, in these days with uh, the internet, we see how, in fact, techniques are killing our memories. And you know, on the other side, it preserves, it, it's an instrument in order to preserve memory also at an intersubject level. Um, we can evaluate uh, in terms of value and uh, so uh, entropy. Uh, the impact of the pharmacoy, are they poisonous or are they uh, a remedy? It depends uh, on the overall balance. If uh, um, I give more entropy than uh, what I gain in, ter in terms of negentropy, of course, the balance is negative. But uh, uh, we can imagine a pharmacology of different uh, pharmaca that can, uh, in general, create a positive uh, regenerating environment uh, from the personal point of view, from the, from the point of view of the inside of the mind, the capacitation, from the ecologic point of view, and whatsoever. Um, the symptoms of poisonment are the disruption of capabilities, uh, which is the subwarfare, mm -hmm. but also the disruption of uh, consumer consumption, okay, which is the subwarfare, the desire, um, we live, many people live to buy things from they see on television, okay, it's of, of an awful way of life and many people, since, uh, since the most entropic, uh, I say, part of our history, uh, started to do that. Mm, we can say that uh, our circuits uh, that make possible uh, the creation, for example, of the collective desire are hijacked by some media, uh, for example, money. Money is a quick reward. Abstract money is a quick reward. And uh, in fact, uh, precipitate us in degentropy, individualism, and disorganization. But uh, 
In fact, I had another reading in those 20 years about uh, pharmacoi, uh, not pharmaca. So about uh, the pharmacon see under the lenses of sacrifice. You know, in, uh, in Greece, in Greece uh, there was the pharmacos, was a person, uh, in general uh, an ugly person, a mutant, we may say, that was, uh, uh, was ex expelled outside the city. Uh, it was basically a scapegoat. Okay, but also uh, it was genetic somehow. Uh, the river was somehow genetic, and uh, um, and was related with the more uh, ancient uh, general uh, phenomenon of sacrifice of, uh, and of tragedy in general. Uh, what I want to mean that uh, we can think about uh, pharmacoi uh, not inside the people. Okay, not uh, as a constitutional in phenomenological way of the subject, but uh, of uh, a mean of communication. I was very interested in writing as a signal, okay, a mean of communication which is outside the people, okay, is a negoci negotiation layer which is outside the, the people, and in fact we are not only totally constructed by a single medium. Somehow we preserve uh, our being as Homo erectus inside our uh, new society and new medias. Okay, we're somehow stuck because of those external media in our possibilities not to not just to savoir vivre and uh, uh, savoir faire, but to communicate, to organize. I'm basically talking about the organization problem. Okay, um, this has a profound uh, significance also in the light of the contemporary science. Uh, which uh, makes, uh, which puts it at the basis of the transcendental or, or the stru structure of the uh, space-time a signal, which is light and uh, other things. And I don't comment now on uh, on quantum mechanics, but it was a problem for a long time. Okay, um, from the tradition of Derrida, I I understood that that is something wrong with metaphysics. And this is strongly based on this opposition of uh, abstract and concrete. Okay, basically the, F, the, 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 the will of the Homo erectus was interpreted by Plato as a virtual reality. Okay, you have a language that means you have writing, but that means that there is a cosmos noetos, there is a real reality which is not present, okay, which is not uh, tangible, but is real. Is more real than what you are. Okay, and uh, metaphysics, as Nietzsche said, is about this virtual reality. Okay, virtual reality which is more, more real than the real thing, disregarding the materiality of writing. Okay, what is the problem? The problem with, with such a reality, virtual reality, is that cancels something. It is, we are stuck in this idea, in this kind of idea, and in particular, it valorizes the, the concept of uh, shape, okay, of uh, form, basically, and this regards uh, the concept of transformation, which, which is the difference. The difference is subtle, it's relative. <coughs> uh, the transformation allows to think about the chirality, okay, basically the difference between left and right, which, ha which have the same form, the, light end, the left end, as the so Kant in, uh, in uh, his work, have in fact the same calculability. They, are the sa they have the same parts, but nevertheless they have a different sense. What is uh, in fact uh, the difference, how, how we can tell really the difference between left and right, just because of the context. Uh, the difference be between left and right boils out to the problem, to, to the locality problem, because in this part of the universe, there is more matter than antimatter, is demonstrated by the violation of parity in quantum mechanics, okay? That's why we can, under, we can tell the difference between left and right. If uh, we were in, made by antimatter, what, what is now right would be seen as left. Okay, <laughs> sorry, it's a really a, a kind of mess, but uh, um, it's, it is meaningful because this uh, difference between left and right is also at the root of the difference between <coughs> money 
and merchandise. How can you tell that you are buying a thing and not buying the other thing when you exchange two things? Max said 20 uh, legs of tissue are a dress. Okay, when you exchange 20 dresses of tissue uh, at a dress, which is the money? That's an important problem. Okay, and it has to do to what? To circulation. I say that money is the commodity. Why? Because it's a prerequisite in the supply chain. So it's about circulation. What hides money, when you think about the simple exchange, is the circulation which is in the back end of this act of exchange. What blockchain can do is to inform us about the whole circulation. And so we can internalize a lot of externalities that we can get thanks to this distributed ledger. Okay. There is a third thing in economy, somehow disregarded, but it's very important for Bitcoin, which is the sacrifice. Okay, we have consumption, we have production, we have a third thing that uh, it's irrational, apparently, that we, we, we would not uh, have if we, can, if we can choose, but uh, it is about the transaction costs, it is about the finance, the, the building of the network, about the marketing, about all what is not production, it's, it's about creating a circulation. And the circulation is a price, okay? This price was traditionally paid by sacrifice. It is the thing that creates the money from no money. For example, uh, there is an interesting study, uh, an old one in, in, uh, in the 20s, that reported the, the, um, the Greek money, for example, the, dac the drachma, to the practices of sacrifice, but it's quite general, this uh, equation between uh, uh, sacrifice and money. In fact, a drachma means a draw, uh, a, an ensemble of six obelos, which are basically uh, brochette. Okay, it was about uh, uh, serving equal parts of meat of the sacrificed animal. Obelos means uh, spiedo, in Italian, I can, uh, spit in English. And in fact, six spit make a drachma. Six are the typical spit roast, with a six hexagon. Okay. Uh, from this pers perspective, the processes of individuation or de individuation uh, can be related with the concept of mimesis, with the concept, the concept of space and circulation in the space, with the concept of relationship with the sacrificed uh, pharmacos uh, in the sense of a shared medium, and uh, in fact are about a different relationship, a, a, no, a, about risk management. Risk management is a, another thing we have to do when we engage in, uh, in economics. It is important to, under, to, uh, to give trust uh, to one asset and not to another asset, to one person, to another person. Sacrifice is what uh, is done in order to get trust. Okay? And it's what definitely the Bitcoin did. Um, as maybe everybody here knows, uh, Bitcoin is based on this uh, very intensive sacrifice of resources. We have to understand yet if the horrible energetic balance of uh, the Bitcoin on the other side uh, is delivering more negentropy than the entropy, the, than the evil it does. If, uh, we have yet to understand if Bitcoin is definitely poisonous. Since Bitcoin at least put us in this uh, room to discuss the possible uh, negentropic uh, uh, organization. And since Bitcoin, in fact, uh, from zero, was able to launch this enormous debate, uh, it basically changed finance for the forever, that's, what, what, that's what's happening, maybe, maybe it was worth uh, this price. But of course, it would be better to minimize sacrifice, it, it is what I'm trying to uh, to explain uh, thereafter. Um, creating trust by sacrifice is in fact uh, also a biological strategy. Um, from the 90s, uh, biologists understood the concept of costly signaling. 
Mm, for example, uh, this is a, a swift, which is a, a kind of swallow. In fact, this is a swallow. <laughs> it, was, it looked better. And uh, uh, we know that females prefer uh, swifts uh, with, with a bigger tail, even if this bigger tail is an handicap in, uh, in the flight. Why? The idea is that if you have a so bigger tail and you are able to fly it, you have very good genes. Okay? That's, that's the idea, and it works nicely. We can see uh, Bitcoin mining is a case of uh, Bitcoin of uh, costly signaling. I don't want to to dig in the, in the problem because it's a, a long story. And uh, we can see also that reputation building, in fact, uh, is costly. I am not uh, stealing your money for a long time. This is an opportunity cost for me. And uh, after a while, I steal your <laughs> your own money as credit agency, agencies did in the, in the tens, more or less, of this uh, century. There is also an interesting point, the possibility of self-signaling. For example, um, in uh, many anthropological situations, you have uh, foundational sacrifices. I build a house and I have to sacrifice an animal. It can be a money, man a money management trick. I'm, uh, I'm advancing this hypothesis here. Uh, in the sense, if I'm rich enough to sacrifice an animal, I deserve to buy an house. On the long run, it's a smart, it, it is a smart uh, ma money, um, money management uh, trick. Uh, I experienced myself in the, in the activity of trading. Okay. Why I'm saying that blockchain now uh, can be as a very particular matter, a very particular chemical, which can be really a panacea, okay? Not, not just a pharmacode, but a panacea, because blockchain is programmable. We can have commodity monies, pseudo-commodity monies, which are scarce, and uh, uh, try to mimic the real thing, the real virtuality, not the opposite, so uh, the virtual reality, okay? But are programmable. So we can basically create molecules. We can create uh, uh, gases. And we know from uh, nonlinear thermodynamics that there are very interesting phenomena. For example, you can have, uh, for certain mixes of gases, uh, there's pigogene in uh, a book, you can have a mix of gases which is totally entropic. They are totally mixed together. With certain gases, if you put a, a source of, uh, of energy, basically if you light the the fire, they separate. And now we have, paradoxically, a negentropic state with respect to what was before. I want to see the, the opportunity of blockchain like building this kind of molecule under possible external energy gradient in order to create really a, a form of, of organization in circulation. That's the idea. It's how somehow the two uh, objects, the two financial objects, pushes, push each other in order to create different circulation. Okay? The externality of different uh, methods of circulation. Okay. About trust. I always uh, read uh, Michel on this problem of trust. Everybody says because of this terrible libertarian that ruined uh, totally the narrative of the blockchains in the beginning, that blockchain is about trustless, okay? It's about not having trust in each other, uh, being uh, very individualist. I think this was not the idea of Satoshi. That's why he published it on the Theotica Foundation. Absolutely. Because the idea, firstly, blockchain is not really a, an agreement between machines. Under the machines, there are people. Uh, as you probably know, blockchain is about voting, okay, about the state of uh, uh, a ledger. There are these enormous uh, use of energy because you cannot be sure that a person doesn't create several accounts in order to vote. If you make uh, this person pay a price, you now know that somehow, okay, it is very possible that the logic is distributed. Okay, so 
in fact, what happens and what happened is that there are faults, there are bifurcations. It happened uh, very nicely when uh, in uh, the episode uh, of the DAWAC, the DAWAC was uh, about the interpreting a contract. It was a, a, a difference between, t between people about the interpretation of a contract. The letter of the contract stated that uh, the smart contract, uh, the, the hacker, who was not a hacker, had the right to use the smart contract as it, it was presented. So he used it and was able to steal funds, to steal, to get funds. But of course, everybody knew that this feature, in fact, was a bug. Not really a bug, something that people didn't really want. Okay? So they interpreted the law, and at the end, there were two parties. One that decided to stick with the autistic idea, okay, the contract is the contract, and the other part, the majority, uh, led by the, the excellent Vitalik Buterin, that instead pointed to the humanistic idea, to the realistic idea, that uh, it was wrong. So basically we can see that calculation in, in reality, about in the blockchain, has a, a, a flash background that allows forking. And it is based, in fact, on explicit, on explicit, uh, explicit consensus and, uh, in the case, forking. Okay. In general, the problem of trust can be seen uh, as a cost. If, if I use blockchain in order to, uh, to automatize somehow, not really automatize, to subordinate to the great jury of the blockchain, some, uh, some parts of my agreement, I can afford to give more trust to the people I'm interacting with, with from other sides of the, uh, of the agreement. Well, I, I, can, I saw real-world examples about that. Okay. For example, if you have a contract with someone, also written, with your... Uh, with your um, Metro, okay, with the, the person who pays you, okay, you can trust you can trust him much more. Uh, if you don't have a contract, we are totally uh, precarian. We are going to every day think about what I have to do in order to survive and so on. It's going to create paranoia, okay. And one of the very interesting uh, and it was uh, the real basis of the, your conversion is the point of uh, having those uh, scarce commodities in the so-called ICOs, in, this, in the crowdfunding. If I know that I'm buying a scarce commodity that in the worst case can also be taken by another team as a basis of the operation, I'm going to trust the team because I'm basically sharing the risk with the market. So what happened? <laughs> happened that in 2017, three guys in a garage continuously had financing for hundreds of millions. It happens that you will now go in Berlin in a meetup, there is people offering you dinner. That's what happens. It happens that the, all the developers that are doing stuff with the blockchain are totally free. Because with this trick of the scarce commodities, you basically can hijack the concept of uh, banking. Uh, in a, that's very important, so I'm going to illustrate this because it's very, very really working, and it works like that, okay? We know there is a scarce commodity, okay? For some reason, okay, which is uh, just appreciation for the leader, for the project, etc., and, and so on, we swarm to this commodity and we know that other people will follow. I can create a scarce anarchy coin, being me credible, <coughs> being me a, a real uh, prophet, and people will follow me. Everybody has 1,000 euros in the bank, okay? There are, say, 1,000 coins. Those, there is 10 people, okay? Those 10,000 euros globally function as a fractional reserve for the value of the coin. And since you can uh, leverage for 10 or more, 
normally as you do with the bank's deposit. In fact, we will be able to give to the profit of anarchy 100,000 euros out of 10,000 euros we had before. So basically, this totally hijacks the, the problem of money and allows to transform directly consensus in financing for the best projects. You can think about those scarce commodities, in fact, as art collectibles. Okay? The, the most similar thing, the valuation of, the, of this thing is not uh, the same of the equity of the, or of the debt. It's an ownership of something which is very ideal, because the real value of the money is not determined beforehand. It depends on the circulation. If, uh, if with just one coin, you can pay all the Bitcoin transactions if uh, it is fast enough. It becomes valuable just because the people hoard it, just because of fetishism. But it is totally out of calculation, the pure fetish. Okay. What we are doing uh, with CO3, I created the part which is about uh, augmented reality plus blockchain. We are going back in the history at the time of Notre Dame de Paris, when uh, there is this famous chapter, Ceci, uh, Tuera, Cela. No? The book, uh, you know, the, um, the architecture was seen as a book of stone with plenty of uh, influence on the person living in a place, okay? And it was based on a scarcity of the um, landscape, okay? Basically, it was based on the fact that everybody knows that in a theatrical way, everybody sees this kind of information. It's the contrary of the extreme inflation of information we have since the reproduction of the, uh, of the press. Okay? And uh, now the enormous inflation of information we have with uh, electronic uh, production. So introducing this principle of scarcity can create a slow information What's the idea of, of CO3 about uh, virtual reality and blockchain? We will have a single shared screen that uh, we, uh, with, with, uh, we, we interact. So instead of being everybody in his personal bubble watching his smartphone, we are going to see the same argument, the same information in the same room. And it is going to create conversations at the very contrary of the entropic flux of deterioritarianization. Creating conversation, you can create collective awareness. Okay? And you can manipulate these financial objects that are on the back end of the front end uh, augmented reality, and so create forms of organization. That's very useful also for the management of urban commons, for example. You have to wash dishes. Okay? There is a button, a virtual button, you can place very easily. Okay, I wash dishes, dishes. I, I deserve a credit. Okay, that's the idea. So we can think to mount very easily this kind of affordances on the real uh, virtuality in our environment. Okay. Brainstorming about uh, interesting places uh, uh, where to put... Uh, um, these, these uh, buttons, okay, these, uh, these interfaces. Uh, for example, w in Turin, talking with uh, Vincent, and, uh, we, we, we thought that waste beans are uh, uh, an excellent place. It is going to be a good strategy also for items because there is people that already put uh, food on the waste bin for the homeless. And we see that, in fact, we are just finding entropy gradients. Of course, uh, there is a, 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 physic, a, a um, landscape gradient of entropy beneath the beam. Okay? Another interesting place are the queues, the time lost uh, beneath the consumption and production. Okay? During the queue, during uh, the time you normally watch the smartphone, you can insert some possible interaction of forms. What we can do, uh, what, which kind of instruments in general we can put in the hands of the people with this interface in order to create those legendropic effects? 
avatar of the things that preserve the differences. For example, the, the fish coin, we told before. And we can mount the circulation of different things. Synthetic commodities, synthetic commodities I, I want to, um, to show that, in fact, uh, uh, when you say um, these guys of uh, blockchain understand just incentives, in fact, they don't uh, have incentives in money, nor in shares. They have incentives in coins. And the coins have value only if you work for the project. So this, uh, this trick of the synthetic commodity rewards the people, in, incentivize people to work for the commons because it is an ecosystem you build. And if you work for the ecosystem, at the end, you are going to get some fruit of your work. And so internalizes somehow the commons. And, and that's really happening everywhere because we have the Ethereum Foundation, for example, who works for free now, we have the coins. But having the coins motivates them to work more. They could sell everything now, but they're not doing it. It works really nicely. Um, avoid numeraire, that's, um, avoid bilateral exchanges, okay, that's another story, I have no time, unfortunately. Avoid numeraire, yes, avoid calculation. We don't need money. Since we have avatar of the things and a lot of money, so we don't need to measure our desire, our will with an external measure, but we can use several measures that in fact are not measuring anything, okay? We can think that nobody buys, there is no a person that buys another one that sells. But one time you are, the thing you're using will be money and the, other, and the other part will be merchandise and the other time the thing will be inverted. So at the end of the day, we are going to create a lot of hierarchy inversions and so expression of possible uh, different circulations inside the system. Ah, okay, that's the super ship. That's the super ship, my favorite chart from, uh, from Wars, which is a, a very nice uh, uh, game of the 90s. At the end, uh, that's a vision for the future. Future means next week because uh, mm, there is a, a very good project by the University of Cambridge and a lot of crypto economists with Wars that uh, is uh, doing an ICO next week. Uh, they will uh, create uh, autonomous agents and they will use a useful proof of work. Okay. I think that at the end, the price of the famous price of the sacrifice is in fact uh, the price of uh, managing this kind of world computer that was the money, uh, a big abacus uh, in which everybody, uh, inter with which everybody interacted. So the minimum entropy we can, uh, we can have is having a useful proof of work that uh, fundamentally serves the exact problem of coordination and monetary, no monetary, multi-financial circulation, okay? This last thing, we are, we are going to, to, to have um, active agents as, uh, as money, okay, and uh, uh, basically select them ev in an evolutionary way. There is responsibility, there is bifurcation, this is not, uh, this requires knowledge, because uh, uh, selection is not natural, it's not natural, it's always somehow sexual, and so depends on uh, our desires. Okay, that was uh, okay. good.